Welcome to the clan! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. That This podcast exists because we want you to win. It's going to take more than your talent. You're not going to hand in a demo tape and get a record deal and have the company spend millions of dollars trying to develop you into a brand name. You're, you're going to have to come to the table with some brand awareness, with some market awareness, with... Uh, some business, like some cash flow that's happening. And that's what this is designed to help you with. It's why we called it the CLIMB, C-L-I-M-B. It's an acronym. It stands for Creating Leverage in the Music Business. You're welcome. The genius that came up with that is Mr. Word Man, Mr. I Do Words Good, Mr. Brent uh-huh. Baxter, my good friend and co-host. Uh, Brent is also an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And what I love about Brent is he teaches songwriters like you how to turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, how to do business like a pro. And when you get those two things down, he gets you in front of the pros. Uh, He connects you with the pros. How can you do better than that? So you can find Brent super easy at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's Mm songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinnell. Johnny owns a Daredevil production. They help you find your sound and they help you grow your audience so you can become the artist that everybody loves and so you can get paid. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at daredevilproduction.com. That's production singular with no S and there is no S because there is no other Johnny D. And the world is thankful. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Happy How New Year. Happy, Happy New, Year, New Year, Year to you. Yeah, man. We've got lots going on. A brand new office. Mm-hmm. I know. I see it in the background. I like it. The, yeah. The back wall looks so much further away than mm-hmm. at your last place, which is I, a good sign. I, I just got to explain this like in less than 30 seconds. For the last two and a half years, I have been in temporary office space because we've grown, like we've been growing like pretty quickly, but... um you know, I'm trying to get down on Music Row or whatever, and either the place is too small or it can't accommodate uh, the normal army interns that we're blessed to have, um, or it's too big. Like, it's just too mm-hmm. much of a commitment. You know, this will house 15 people. Like, oh, I, I don't can't. need that. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, in business, right, sales are a fantasy, overhead is a reality. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I, I was in the, the Regis office space uh, for two and a half years. It just, I was so sick of ready to get out of there. And we just moved into Fort Knox, Nashville. If you haven't heard of this place, uh, especially if you're in Nashville, Google it. It is a, an amazing mus- music industry ecosystem that I really believe um, in the next couple, like in the next year or two, is going to be essentially Music Row because the property values on Music Row are so ridiculous. And this is sad and it makes me sick, but all those quaint houses that are publishing companies and record labels and, and booking agencies and, and law firms that all orbit around the music industry, they're going to be sold and they're going to be turned into freaking apartments and, mm. and hotels. It's just, it's just too valuable. So that said, um, everything's going to migrate out here. It's a 190,000 square foot building. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they've, they, uh, it's on two different power grids. So there's recording studios here, publishing companies already, um, major audio kind of like Adams audio, the speakers, uh, studio speakers, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're housed here. Indie connect is housed here. Um, there's gonna be lawyers, uh, re- oh man, it's gonna be, it's just so cool. A hub. They're gonna put a restaurant in here that mm-hmm. there's already, it's already set up to have one. So it's gonna be like this. If you can imagine like what a Facebook building would be like, or a Google <laughs> Yeah, would be like like would it be like to work there? And I mean, it, there's a gym in here <clears throat> with uh, showers and stuff. There is going to be like this massive um, c- common room with mm-hmm. like a huge sort of kitchen area and like, a couple pool tables and some game rooms, so that everybody that's in here can commingle, right? And that's awesome. And, yeah, it's it's cool, dude. Like the energy already, and we're we're nowhere near the first company that's in this building, but it's it's so. Um, it looks almost like a destruction zone. They're re- they're redoing everything. I mean, they redid all the HVAC, mm-hmm. all this stuff. So it, it is. It, it, it's they're still just putting it together, you know. And it's going to take some time. It's going to take another year to do it. But it's already the energy is just so cool. People knocking. Hey, man, I heard about you guys coming in. Welcome. And I'm just like, yes, like it's so fun. <laughs> Lex and, I and, and you know, Randy came into the office from mm-hmm. Garfog. So we're just having a big time now. 
Awesome. Awesome. Good deal. All right. Well, uh, you're at the Hound today. What I, I am after our, um, our silliness, uh, the 100th episode, we're going to get back to business. Um, so yeah, today I want to talk about how to get past the closed doors of the music business. And, um, I got an email from someone in the songwriting pro community and I got uh, the permission to share this, uh, but she did ask to remain anonymous. So I'm not going to give her name. Uh, so there you go, Dave Quirk. Uh, you're completely anonymous from here on out. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. It, it, it wasn't Dave. Um, so I won't really tell him it's you, Todd Dickinson. Um, you're completely safe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, I kid. Uh, but yeah, let me, I'm going to read this email to you and then we're going to respond to it because this, this person's pain, I think, um, is a pain of a lot of our listeners who are trying to, you know, get into the music business. But uh, before we get into that, let's do a review. Johnny, you yeah. have one queued up for us? We do. We got another five-star review. Um, you know what? Uh, in the true spirit of a great hit songwriter, uh, brevity right? Like simplicity mm -hmm. is cool. So this is a five-star review um, by Keith Fan. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, a user on Twitter told me about this podcast a few months ago. Very cool show. End of story. There we go. Thank you, Thank you Keith Fan. Love it. Brevity. Yeah. Good to the stuff. point. And it says everything we need to know. I love it. <laughs> yep. So thank you, Keith Fan. We are a fan of Keith Fan. We're a Keith Fan fan. That's right. For that. Uh, so let's get into this. All right. And this is what it says. It says, Brent, thanks for opening this gate. This was in response to an email I sent out about, I sent out to everybody uh, that downloads my ebook at giftfrombrent.com. It's, you know, it's a sequence. Part of it is, hey, help me help you. What pain you're dealing with? What can I help you with? And so I send that out to everybody and, and you know, several people respond. So this is one of those responses. It says, um, Brent, thanks for opening this gate. I know I have so much to learn about becoming a better lyricist and I will continue down that path. But once I get a song that is truly worthy of being shared, I don't know how to go any further. Nobody wants to listen to songs of unknown writers. It's, a very, it's very much a closed door society. The system seems broken to me. The industry wants new, fresh material, yet doesn't open up for that potential. We independent songwriters pour our hearts and souls into creating. What the heck are we supposed to do with our creations if we don't have a connection? Sometimes it feels like it's all for naught. Nutshell, med students go through years and years of education, ultimately becoming an MD. Athletes train their entire lives and, and live a healthy lifestyle uh, due to their habits, skills, and strengths. Some go you know, much further. Um, but at the least they live a healthy lifestyle. Independent songwriters find inspiration from the crazy sources and write and write and write only to be told no unsolicited materials uh, accepted. Outcome. It's hard to keep your eye on this prize because we're point blank told no thank you. Signed. Hmm. Unhonest, right? I bet you there's a million people out there feeling um, the, the same way. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people that could have sent that, that in. I think it's a very real... Uh, pain and a very real problem. So I emailed this person back to say, hey, is it okay if I share this? And I, I sent a response like, can I share this response and more stuff with, with the climb community? And she said it was all right. So that's, but it's very real, very honest. And I appreciate that honesty because dude, I've been there. It, it is a yeah. very real thing. Um, and I think it's a lot of it goes the same for artists too. Like I'm doing great stuff. How do I, but what's the point if I can't, what do I do with that after that? So, um, I'm going to read you the response I sent to her and then, you know, we'll expound upon it as we go. So Johnny, I'd like to have your input on this as well. And hopefully we can, we can help you climbers out there uh, find some ways into the business and to overcome some of this pain. So here's my response. Hi, Chelsea Stallings. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See how many times I can drop names in here. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. That was not Chelsea. Um, okay. But for real, it says, Yes, it is difficult. Okay, I wish it weren't, but the no unsolicited songs policy exists for a couple of reasons. So I want to set that up why that is. You know, they say they want new stuff, but they're not very open to new stuff. There are some legit reasons for that. It's not people just playing head games with you and just being jerks about it. Okay, there's a reason. One reason, a publisher or an artist is a lot more likely to get hit with a baseless lawsuit than to find a hit song. All right, because most of the stuff isn't, isn't ready, isn't going to earn money, which is what they're looking for artists and publishers. And so 
you open up the floodgates. Yeah, we listen to everything. Go ahead and send everything in. Well, somebody sends in a song called, I don't know, Female. And then two years later, Keith Urban has a song called Female. It's hitting the radio. And then they're getting a lawsuit because, well, I sent that song in. Even if they're different songs, you can't copyright a title, but that's not going to stop, may not stop some people from suing you anyway, even if it's not a winner, even if you didn't really do anything wrong and you didn't take their idea. It just opens you up to so much more of that. And, and so and, that's uh, one thing. Can mm-hmm. I? Uh, do you want to finish the email first and we take them one by one? No, I, no, that's just, we can just kind of go through, expound as we go. Okay, so uh, we've talked about this before on the episode, but this is so prevalent that songwriters have insurance on this. Yes, there's copyright infringement insurance. It's a thing. Because people, I mean, and, and, and specifically speaking about America, um, there's 7.6 billion people on this planet. There's 330 million people in the United States. We have, we occupy, we house 5% of the world's population. This is a fact. We have 95% of the world's lawsuits. So, I did not know uh, that. That's scary. Yeah, it's, it's scary. Like everybody mm-hmm. just, that's their out, right? That's their free thing. Whoa, you got mm-hmm. hit, dudes. You better sue, you know? Like, uh, yeah. you know, go to, go to Germany on a hike and they're like, hey, dummy, don't fall off the, the cliff. Don't fall off the help in America, <laughs> right, or whatever. Yeah. We, got, we ruined the countryside mm-hmm. putting up railings to make sure that some idiot doesn't fall off or he's going to sue the state. Right. right. The, the, I mean, that's why, you know, you hear all these weird, you know, signs like, you know, on medicines, on, on all kinds of food. Toro lawnmowers, don't lift this up and try to cut your hedges because some guy did it, cut off his fingers. <laughs> Not to be used yeah. internally or <laughs> yeah. whatever. Oh, for external use only, don't try to cut your hair with it. Why? Because somebody sued and now they got to put an extra <clears throat> sticker on there. And I, you know. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's, this is a real thing. And mm-hmm. uh, I just want to sort of, uh, expand on the magnitude of mm-hmm. that. So, part of why that is is a response to a real, excuse me, a real thing. And don't get mad at the publishers and the artists. Get mad at the people doing all these lawsuits because yeah. they're the one causing it. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's point number one. Point number two is nobody has time or resources to listen to everything from everybody. There's just it's laws of time and space. They just yep. can't. I mean, especially when the vast majority of it is not hit quality. When you're looking for the very, very best, by definition, that's a very small percentage. Yeah. So it's not even a matter of good enough and professional grade, which is a bigger percentage, which is still a minority of all the songs that would come in. They just don't have time. They don't have unlimited staff. They don't have unlimited. They're trying to keep their gig in a very super competitive business. It's yep. really hard to have success in. And so for them to say, I'm just going to listen to everything, no matter where it comes from, it's just, it's, you know, the odds are against you Yeah. when that, so they just, they're more likely to find a lawsuit than they are to find a hit and they don't have time to listen to everything anyway, or they're going to have to hire all these people or get all these interns and, and still that's not them listening. Yep. You know, that's just pushing it to somebody else to filter. <clears throat> so, Math, knock, knock, right? right. Bring that back. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's and it? let's Math. talk about that for a second. So this is, this is, you can, there's a, it, um, what's the, I'm trying to figure out a good way to describe this. The illustration of that, the manifestation of the opposite of what you're talking about, no bar being set, right, mm-hmm. um, is everybody gets, it's what's happening on the internet now. Everybody gets mm-hmm. to put their little finger painting up on the world's refrigerator mm-hmm. and they want somebody to say something about it. So... Mm-hmm. You have, you know, tons of amateur song demos, songs, mm-hmm. people that, uh, you know, maybe really want to be songwriters, but um, either haven't got their 10,000 hours yet, mm-hmm. they're, they're early on in their journey and they've got farther to go, or some people just fancy themselves to be songwriters because they can put down, you know, your eyes are blue, I love you, it mm-hmm. has, you know, as many cliches as they can, and they're not really doing it, 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 it and it's just... It's terrible that um, Harry Connick Jr. said it on American Idol. You know, everybody's like, you know, art is subjective. No, it, it's objective. Mm-hmm. Too. Like there are, there are there's terrible songs, you know? Yeah, because there is a, a craft to it. That's right. And so the same thing. So what, what I tell people, and this maybe is going to be a little edgy for some people to 
tough pill to swallow. Okay. But it's like, if you really want to do it, you're really going to do it. And I have this Mm -hmm. conversation every day with a bunch of my artists. I have artists who have funding, Mm -hmm. right? Who have talent and who have people behind them. So sometimes it's their parents. Sometimes it's an investor with the means to make it happen. And they're freaking being lazy. Mm -hmm. And they're not working hard enough. Like they don't really want it. And Mm -hmm. then you think back to artists like Bon Jovi when it cost $150,000, $250,000 to make a record. And so one song wasn't cheap to get that on tape, but yet somehow managed to figure out a way to make 50 demos of Runaway, his first hit. And that's what got him a compilation record. And that's what got... um, that's what got him his record deal. And how did he get it on a compilation record? Because he was doing jingles at the radio station. Why was he doing jingles at the radio station? Because he wanted to be in the music industry. He didn't mm-hmm. care what it took. You know, so there's like all these different things that happened, but he was there. He was in it. He was making it happen. He was on the scene. And then all of a sudden, a couple planets aligned and he could do it. Yeah. As opposed to sitting back and saying, you know, why isn't anybody giving me a break? Right. Uh, two, two things on that. One, going back to the math thing is, you know, a lot of you are in other Facebook groups beyond just the climb community or the songwriting pro community. Um, a lot of those Facebook groups where we talked about four people just start throwing demos and work tapes and everything, just posting and posting and posting. Okay. You're in that group. Say you're looking for a co-writer. Do you go and listen to every single one of those? Good. Point. No, you don't <laughs> because you know, man, most of it's crap, right? Yeah. Or I just don't have time. I got a job. I got kids. Yeah. I want to find co-writers, but I, uh, yeah. I can't listen to everything that comes in, right? So you're in that position too, most likely. You're in that position with music and that's, a lot of that's free, right? I mean, you're like, I want to find good jams. Do you listen to every new song that that's drops on Spotify or iTunes every week? No, you don't. No one has time for that. Yeah, and, and could so, you go back to a, a conversation that we've talked about uh, on multiple times over previous episodes, but the conversation I had with Kim Tribble. So this mm-hmm. isn't necessarily a reflection on you. It's a, it's a reality of songwriting. Kim Tribble will be the first. He's a hit songwriter. He's got multiple number ones. He'll be mm-hmm. the first to tell you, I write 12 songs a week. And you're like, holy crap, dude, that's amazing. He's like, nah, I don't get too excited. Most of them suck. <laughs> right, yeah. He'll tell you. Mm-hmm. They oh, yeah. suck. I got to write 30 crappy songs to get to one good one. That's mm-hmm. That's, and, and, and that's what some writers do. So it's, it's, does the publishing company want to go through and listen to all Kim Tribble's crappy songs? No, he don't hand them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He or he, he, he'll spot like probably the ones that are like, Hey, these are the ones I really think are, you know, he turned them all in. Cause if you have to with the publishing deal, but like, Hey, pay attention to these. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. helping to filter them out, you know? So right. it's, 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 I just don't want everybody to think like, well, we're saying that you suck. That's not, the case but it, yes. everybody is below yeah. the bar most of the time yeah because exactly. it's a really really high bar exactly so and i'm the, there and the bar i'm there most of the time the bar has to be set <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> so there has to be a filter and the other thing is where you're talking about if you want to do it bad enough you're going to do it part of why it's they don't make it super easy to get to them is because they are looking for pros not wannabes, not lazy artists, not people that want it to be done for them. So it's like, if you're, if you want it bad enough and you have the work ethic, you'll get to me. You it's, you will filter yourself out. That's part of like America, right? When America's founded, what's this, this entrepreneurial spirit, this freedom, go get it thing that is kind of baked into America. Well, we were largely self-selecting people had to cross the freaking ocean in a boat to get risking here, their lives. risking yeah. their lives for something, a chance of something better for freedom, for and then, opportunity. And then for it after we got here. Right. <laughs> so it's like, army. those are the people that came here. It's baked <clears throat> in. Right. So in a way, you know, there's respect for people that come to Nashville, the people that do it for a long time. Like, Oh, you got through the filters to get to me. Okay. It's a self-selecting group. You're the ones that want it. That's right. You may not be the only ones with talent. You're not the only ones with talent. But you want it bad enough, so you may be able to stick it out. You know, so right. <clears throat> point three I sent back to this person is a publisher's or artist, whoever's time is better spent listening to songs that come through trusted sources, such as publishers, a PRO, certain workshops and events, professional peers, other pro songwriters, that sort of thing. So that's where the hit songs and the hit writers are most likely to be found. So they trust in filters. 
And can they we go, can we can, can, mm-hmm. can we expand on that for a second and just oh, yeah. to, over to blue collar world? This is the way your life works too. If you're listening to this podcast, mm-hmm. this is the way that you've gotten jobs before in the past because your buddy, uh, mm-hmm. your friend said, you know what, she's going to be great. Like she she can totally do this job. You know, right? And think about this in terms of something like um, construction, right? Like mm-hmm. I really, Brent, I really, really, really want to be a construction. Like I want to be a home builder. Right. Mm-hmm. So if there was any, if home building was a crime, mm-hmm. <laughs> how much evidence is there to convict you? You're probably pretty safe. It's like, yeah, none. Okay. None. But so if I went out and did it, would you want to buy that house from me? You know, mm-hmm. It's going to be a mess, right? Nothing's going to, yeah. it's going to fall apart probably. So what happens is you've got to go and get your 10,000 out. Course, right, you've got mm-hmm. to start working construction. Someone's got to tell you how to drive a nail. Someone's got to tell you how to frame the door. Someone's got to tell you how to pour concrete. Mm-hmm. Someone's got to, you know, and you have to learn all these different things. And it's a very sophisticated thing that ends up coming together: the plumbing, the electricity, and then mm-hmm. you know the relationships that are required to get these people to perform for you, and blah 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, you're a home builder. Right. I, and I think it doesn't happen uh, because you want it to happen. You've got to do the work too. Right. right. Yeah. And if you look at it like. Um, at the time of this recording, we just had the national championship game for the uh, college football. Sick game. Yeah. So. Crazy. Um, okay. So I'm sure there are a lot of athletes out there going, Nick's, I sent my, you know, great, my highlight reel to Nick Saban. He hadn't got back to me yet. Yeah. Nick Saban is, okay. You just imagine how many people would love to play for the, probably the greatest college coach ever. Right. Yep. Love to play for, oh my gosh, how many, five national no, he's gotten six, but what, five out of the last nine years or something ridiculous. Yeah, so you imagine how many people like are trying to get their kids, their friends highlight reel to somebody on staff at Alabama. Crazy, mm-hmm. right? So they don't, come on. What are their, what's their best bet for finding those guys? They do have recruiters that go out and they look and they also have a relationship with coaches, high school coaches. And those mm-hmm. coaches can probably can call them up going, hey, I got this guy. I got this fullback. I got this linebacker. I got the, you need to pay attention to this guy. And they're going, Oh, okay. We have, that's why they, they build good relationships with coaches, high school coaches yeah. on another level, NFL, the NFL is not scouting in the schoolyard, you know, pickup games mm-hmm. in the city park. No, they are going to college. They have combines. They invite people. They go to college pro days. Like the Arkansas Razorbacks will have a pro day. They bring in their seniors and their, you know, really, really good juniors maybe. And the scouts come there. Why? Because they've been through a filter. They know they've been coached. They know they're at a good program. Somebody's already done a lot of the work for them. They're not just bringing people. It's not an open tryout for the New England Patriots. Yeah. They don't do that. They use filters. They go, okay, we're going to, you know, we're watching game film. These people that have already been selected, they've been the best out of high school, the best out of college. They've been to the combine. We've tested, you know, it's all these other things narrow it down before it has a chance to get on their radar. They are not holding open tryouts. Why? Maybe there's some diamond in the rough out there somewhere, you know, playing street ball in Detroit. Thing is though, their best bet for finding the next all pro is at, through one of their trusted sources. Yeah. It's same kind of deal. If you want to turn pro, you got to get in the pipeline. So it's PRO. So my advice. Okay. So now we've, we've outlined kind of part of the situation, part of the problem. Here's my advice. Get into the filters. Okay. So and I'm just going to give you an example of some of the filters, some ways that you can connect to the pros, right? Cause that's one of my goals with songwriting pro and everything to help you connect with the pros. So one thing I host a quarterly play for publisher event, super competitive, but it's helping writers make connections with publishers. There are other events like this out there. And if you're good enough, you get noticed. Mm -hmm. I've had writers make it to multiple ones. I've had them connect and it might be a second time or third time in front of that publisher you know, because they've gotten to them some other ways and this is another at bat. It might be the first time the publisher becomes aware of somebody. There are other events like this too, but that's just one that I host that I can, I can speak for <laughs> that I know is legit. Um, you can join a community like the Songwriting Pro Facebook group or the Climb community, freddy.com, where you can meet other serious writers. If you're looking for like co-writers, if you're good enough, you'll start making co-writing connections and you'll build your network. As your skills and your reputation and your network grow, you'll begin to have opportunities to connect to the music business. So, you know, you find your crew, you know, you find your college team, 
you know, you're not getting paid yet. At least you're not supposed to, right? <laughs> In college. Music, you can always get paid for. But, you know, say your college crew. These are the people that are at another level from, you know, the high school level songwriters you've been writing with. They're in these communities. You can check out their stuff. They can check out your stuff. You start building your team. You start writing. You push each other to get better. As your songs get better, you'll start getting noticed more. And they may know somebody in the music business that they connect you to or that their song that they wrote with you gets in front of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, say, like the Play for Publisher event, uh, not every song. There are some solo rights in there, but most of them are co-writes. And Mm -hmm. so, maybe, you know, Joe sends a song in that's a co-write, and he's the one that entered the song. He gets through to, like, John Osher. Well, Joe may have Betty as a co-writer on it. And now Betty can, you know, if Osher loves the song, maybe Betty can follow up and say, hey, John, I, uh, you know, I was a co-writer on that song with Joe that you really liked. You know, you're one step closer. might give you an opportunity to say hi, to, to reach out, that sort of thing. Because you got something legit to talk about. Like, right. Uh, exactly. There's a, you, there's a point of, before, of you know, reference. Heard, you've heard me before. Yeah. And he's going to remember. Yeah. <laughs> you heard me before and you liked it. Oh, okay. Maybe you're not you're crazy. You know, or maybe you're not just a beginner. Maybe you're not a waste of my time. Maybe yeah. I could stand here for another minute and talk to you because you never know. And the third thing is study the craft. Invest the time and possibly the money in getting better. Okay, nothing works if your songs aren't really, really, really good. And not just good, but the kind of good that can help other people make money because that's what they're, if you want to get in the business, people got to make money. So the music business cannot help you if your songs are good but there isn't a market for what you do. I'm really good at these folk polka. I call it folka songs with the dance beat <laughs> that are 10 minutes long. You know, I'm, um, yeah, I don't cool know what 10 minute intro. It builds up and then yeah. The lyrics. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I'm sorry. I can't, that's cool. It's quality for what it is, but I can't make any money off that. So I can't help you. I can't invest in that. Right. It's a bad event, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, and, and the other thing is, all the networking, all this stuff gets a whole lot easier when your songs are better. It just yeah. makes it easier. People want to talk about you like, oh my gosh, have you heard this song? Or, oh, you should meet Joe. He's a good songwriter. Let me hook you up with some of my other friends to write because I know it's going to reflect well on me, not poorly on me. That sort of That's thing. Right. It makes it easier to get through the play for publisher filter to get into the group, to get in front of a John Osher or Chris Oglesby or whoever. And, and I think a, a level of perspective is mission critical and oh, yeah. I, i'm gonna give you an example like you and i were talking before we started recording this podcast so we're doing the climb conference mm-hmm. with, uh chelsea stallings and her crew out in utah we're doing mm-hmm. that in april and uh two of the other people are going to be on that panel are going to be chris oglesby from uh bmg right? yeah bmg and, mm-hmm. and um and then shelby kennedy uh from TuneCore in nashville and I, I was at last night i was at a uh showcase with um dave brainerd's uh, new artist who also happens to be his girlfriend, which is really great artist, man. Killer songs, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just hanging out afterwards talking with, I was there with a songwriting friend of mine and, and all of a sudden I just caught out of my ear, you know, somebody's like, bye Shelby. And I turn around like, what? Like, cause I haven't uh-huh. met Shelby yet. I don't know Shelby. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 everybody needs to know that. I don't know Shelby. I'm, I, I met him. So I was like, what? I turned around and I just ran over to him with my Shelby. Shelby Kennedy. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm Johnny from Daredevil. He's like, dude, what's up? Like, you know, we're going to do this thing together. It's going to be cool. And we started talking. But you know what we talked about? And this is what's really important. We didn't bitch about why this wasn't working or why that wasn't working. (laughs) Right. We talked about like the conversation we had was, dude, okay, I've got like, I've talked about this, you know, point A, point B and point C. And then he came back. He's like, yeah. And then we're going back and forth. Like, you know, we could, maybe this could work. And maybe that, like, we're trying to figure out a way to navigate the waters, right? Mm-hmm. We, we've made a, a, a sort of uh, um, tentative, we didn't put a date on it, but I was like, let's get together, have some lunch or something like that. Mm-hmm. I got a, three things I want to put in front of you. And I, and I told him, I want you to blow holes in it. I want mm-hmm. you to tell me why it's not going to work, right? Because mm-hmm. there's something I'm not thinking of, maybe he is thinking of, right? right. And, he's, and he's like, you know, me and Oglesby, we do that all the time. Like, like mm-hmm. hey, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Are you thinking about this? Why? Because the whole the spirit of the conversation is how do we get better mm-hmm. at what we're doing as yeah. opposed to this sucks. We can't right. records. Man, like, you That's know. That's a dead-end conversation. Yeah. 
and it's worthless and it's right. negativity and it doesn't help anybody. So you have to get your heads right. You have to get mm-hmm. into that game and, and approach it from that respect. Like, you know what? There's always room for improvement. And so yeah. for you to sit there and say, I'm good enough. Why don't I have a cut yet? Why can't I get into a publishing company? Well, maybe you are and maybe you're networking stocks, you know, or maybe right. you're not. You know, maybe you're well on your way, but you've still got, you're only, you're, you're only on your 50 yard line. You still got a lot of a lot mm-hmm. yards left to get that into the touchdown, into the end zone. Yeah. You know? So and which, I just, I, like you approach it the right way. You got to think about it. The spirit has to come from mm-hmm. like, how are we going to get better? Man? How are we going to do this better? Yeah. And which leads me to the fourth point, just hang in there. You just got to keep going. If it's really what you want bad, badly enough, you got to hang in there. And that's going to give you the time to grow as a writer, to grow some relationships. Like, and, you know, the cure for your songwriting symptoms is better songs. Most of what ails you musically is really helped by better songs. It's easier to meet people when you have better songs. Mm-hmm. You know, you go play out, more people are going to come up to you if your songs are killer. Instead yeah. of you having to go out and approach them, you're more magnetic. Yep. And opportunity is attractive to activity. So if you're out there and you're doing smart things, wise things, and you're out there hustling, then you have more like Johnny, like, okay, meeting Shelby. You didn't know Shelby before. Nope. This opportunity comes in about the climb conference. We're going after it. It gives you Shelby ends up being coming in a part of it. Chris Oglesby, you know, said, Hey, how about Shelby coming in? Great. I don't know Shelby either. So he came on board with that. Now you're out at doing another gig and you run into him and you wouldn't have had, maybe that name wouldn't have rung a bell if yeah. the, the climb conference wasn't happening and wasn't on your radar. Absolutely and even if it, yeah. yeah. And even if it, you didn't know who he was, but there wouldn't be a connection from his side. Right. Right. He'd be I like, Hey, you're him. just, you're just a, Hey, you, Hey, you're a guy. I'm just, nice. random guy. Hey, you're just some are. random guy out. You're nice. I don't fun. ever run into those. <laughs> yeah. It gives you something, you know, some point of reference where he goes, Oh, you're, speaking at this conference, okay, I put you in this different bucket as a professional. Yeah. More of, you know, you're a peer more now. of a colleague, a peer versus um, I'm going to that conference. But even I'm going to that conference, I'm really looking forward to it. Is something better than just, I'm a dude. What's up? Yeah. What can you do for me? Exactly. Yeah. And, and it, it, so you've got to get out on the scene. So when we're saying like, hang in there, the, 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 the other part is, is you can't hang in there and wait. You've mm-hmm. got to hang in there and continue to work and continue mm-hmm. to put out the, you know, continue to put out the work. I, I was out with a, a great artist, an incredible singer and writer uh, that I met through Steve O'Brien last night. We were all at this showcase. And after the showcase ended, him and I ended up going to uh, meet up a bu- with a buddy of his at like Whiskey Kitchen. And, and um, we're just trying to find a way to work together. He doesn't have an investor yet, but he's mm-hmm. got all the talent in the world. So I want to keep my eye on him, you know, because yeah. when he's, and, and he keeps asking me questions and he's a good guy, you know, and, and, um, he's not an ask hole and, right. you know, he K hole. You know, right. But, but he's, but he's, he keeps asking questions and, um, and then, and he's asking advice of a lot of different people and then he's exercising on it, right? He's just mm-hmm. trying to do better business as well as write better songs. And, 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 and he's, so he's got this group of people around, but he's out there on the scene. He'll text me twice a week, mm-hmm. you know? Hey man, I'm gonna be over here. I'm playing down here if you're, if you're, if you're downtown, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm out with somebody and I'm like, can you go see a killer singer? Like this guy's it's amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. And we go in and, and, and it, I'm not there every time, not by a long shot, but the point is he's in touch. He's he's networking and we have really good conversations. And I like talking with him because he's interested in being better. Yeah. You know, that's, that's and, attractive. Yeah. You know? it's, and he's, he's working it and he's so yeah. he's, he's and so he, one of the things he was talking about is like, I've really got to get my, like the, the YouTube strategy that we've talked about mm-hmm. on the program before. He's like, I, Johnny, I'm, I've just got a, a mic for Christmas. I'm going to get this mm-hmm. rig going over here and I'm going to start doing this stuff. And um, I know I need to be doing more. And I was always waiting to put stuff out. And now I'm just going to start publishing, you know, now I'm just yeah. going to start uh, shipping, right? Like, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, every week I'm going to put something out there. It's going to create more awareness for me. And that's what I need. To, and so we starting to get it, right? But mm-hmm. he's, he's like, what he's telling me is, I'm going to double down on my work this mm-hmm. year. And, and, uh, cause I know I got the talent 
And the more I work, the more I'm going to get out there and the more opportunities I'm going to create for myself. You know, there it is. Yeah. Work, 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 work. Yeah. And just, you know, to bring it home to us, I mean, not that we're, you know, the gatekeepers of Music Row or anything, but just as an example, like in the climb community and with, you know, Songwriting Pro and Freddie, like who are the people that end up kind of popping up for us that aren't maybe big clients or anything like that? But to me, it's, it's people like, you know, Jonathan Cochran. Right. He, yep. he posted in the group, Hey, I'm implementing some of this stuff. Here are my results. Like, oh, somebody's doing it automatically. Boop, raises his, his uh, profile higher in our consciousness. Cause he's like, hey, I'm doing some of this stuff. Here's what I've been learning. Oh, what? Oh, awesome. Let us know. Yeah. You oh, know? One more thing I didn't tell you about him yesterday. Mm-hmm. I get a text from Cochran cause we're, we're, you know, phone buddies because he mm-hmm. show. Right. So I get a text from him. He's like, Hey man, he's decided to make the move to Nashville. He's like, I'm oh. in Nashville and I'm reaching out to know if you're taking on any interns. Boom. <laughs> I mean, like, dude, I need to learn more. I want to come work for you. If, it's, if there's an availability, would you please let me know? And I was like, dude, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm down for that. When you get to town, you call me, you know, yeah. and, and we'll hang out. And uh, so there it is, like hunger yeah. for knowledge. Wants right. to improve. Like, how do I do this? I know I can improve. I know there's more stuff mm-hmm. I got to learn. I said that to Shelby last night. I'm like, dude, I want to pick your brain. Like he's so demure. He's so, Mm -hmm. um, what's the word? Modest, right? Yeah. I'm just like, dude, I want to pick your brain. He goes, there's nothing there. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm like, no, I got a lot to learn from you. Like I want to, you know, there's things I'm not thinking about. There's things I'm not aware of. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not aware of, and you can make me aware of them. Let's go have a conversation and vice versa. You know? Yeah. So it's it's people like that that are, that are hungry, that are applying. It's people that are posting good songs. Mm-hmm. You know, that like on the Freddie group or in Day Tuesday in the songwriting pro group, it's, you know, people that you're like, oh, this is consistently good. I remember them more. Yep. You know, yep. Dave Quirk, people like that that are consistently doing good songs. Yeah. And just, okay, that makes you more memorable in a positive way. And guess what? I mean, it, it, because this is a human interaction here, mm-hmm. um, we, you know, when one of those people who's been on your radar screen more than others sends in a song for, say, play for publisher, much, you're prepared to love it. <laughs> well, yeah, thankfully, that's, that's why I listen uh, anonymously. I don't look at the names before I listen because I try to cut that out to try to leave it song by song. But sometimes you recognize the voice. Yeah. And you go, well, and oh, there it is. Like, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah, it, you know, it does creep in there, but I, I try style. to, and I try to see a songwriting style. You right. Know? So I try to stay away from that. Just try to keep it song by song and not let, you know, friendships or some of those relationships, you know, factor into like, Oh, I'm expecting to like this because I like their other stuff. But sometimes you, after a while of doing these, you start to recognize some people, but that's also a good thing because it means they're, they keep doing, they keep doing it. They keep putting it in front of you. Yep. Keep when that familiarity part. helps you get, you know, uh, sometimes breeds uh, favor- not favoritism, but you tend to like it more. You start like, oh, yeah. oh, I get, I'm acquiring the taste. Um, but listen, you know, you don't have to take my word for it on on some of these ways to get through the filters and to get in front of people. If you really want to go pro, you need advice from as many pro songwriters as possible, right? So I have good news for you. I'm going to hook you up with an awesome multi-hit songwriter. So here's the deal: I'll connect you with the pros, right? That's my that's part of my gig. So in February, I'm hosting Freddie's Know the Row with hit songwriter Byron Hill. This is your chance to sit down face-to-face online. So you can join us from anywhere in the world with a real deal pro hit songwriter. So check this out about Byron. Since moving to Nashville and signing his first publishing deal in 1978, his songs have generated more than 700 recordings and have been released on 91 industry certified gold and platinum albums and singles. Jeez, that's a lot I've been to his <laughs> I've been to his house you know writing with him and stuff his walls Pretty are cool. not bare <laughs> you just want to go smell them all just like wow <laughs> yeah he wrote you know Full Heart of Memory George Strait's first number one single he wrote Born Country for Alabama and by, and and by the way George Strait's had 82 number one oh, singles <laughs> ridiculous so Byron is a real deal he's still you know he's writing uh, Dan Hodges music he's he's still writing he's not a legacy writer. I mean, he has a legacy, but he's still doing it, man. He's legit. So he's going to come in to the Know the Row online event in February. We're going to be taking your questions. You can join us. You can ask Byron his take on it. Hey, what can I do to get noticed? What can I do to get in? Or whatever else you want to ask him. Um, I want to ask him stuff. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of a guided 
in, you know, interview and then you can, y'all can join us. So here's the deal. You can join us online from anywhere in the world. It's Thursday, February 8th from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Time. And the kicker is this event is free to members of freddy.com. That's F-R-E-T-T-I-E.com. All right. So this is a, this is a membership benefit to the subscribers of Freddy. You can join us for free. And it's also lives in the membership area archive. So if you miss it, you can catch the replay, whether you are listening to this in the future, it's a year later and you're catching this podcast. Oh man, I want to see that. Well, if you remember Freddie, you can go in and watch it. But also don't worry, if you don't want to take advantage of all of Freddie's membership advantages, mm-hmm. you can just purchase a ticket outright. If you don't want to you know, do the membership, you can just purchase a ticket. That way you just see it once and that's it, uh, which is, it's a good value at that too. But um, how to find out more to go and reserve your spot, to watch replay or to join Freddie, you just download my free ebook, giftfrombrent.com. I'll be sending out emails about it, let you know all the details, the links where you can register, either subscribe to Freddie or just you know purchase your ticket for the event. And I do these quarterly. So if you miss this one, there's probably another one coming up in a month or two. So you can mm-hmm. check that out too. So yeah, Byron Hill, he's legit. He's a great guy and uh, you'll enjoy spending time with him. I'm looking forward to getting to hang out with him again. Right on, man. Well, um, there it is. So give from Brent.com, get the book, get in there and start, you know, it's about making relationships at the end of the day. If you want to be Mm -hmm. unsolicited or if you want to go from being unsolicited to a solicited writer, you got to start somewhere. Here's a great Mm -hmm. way to reach out that and play publisher events that you do are just really fantastic ways to, to, to start to create a relationship. And Mm -hmm. if you've got something going on, their ears are going to perk up. I promise you the cream always rises to the top. That's just the reality of, of anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, that brings us to the end of another killer episode of the climb. Join the climb community. If you haven't already just search for the climb community on Facebook, you need to request to be let in. We let all the boys and girls in who request it. And if you're not good boys and girls, then you're requesting to be let out and we're happy to roadhouse you. Roadhouse you. Right out the front door. Right. <laughs> right. Um, subscribe to it. If um, This way you don't have to think about it. It just magically appears right in your podcast player every single Tuesday, which is awesome. And uh, take 20 seconds, leave a rating and review. We'll read it on the air. We'll make you famous. It makes us look legit for, for new people that are want to stick their toe in the water and find out what's going on. And um, I'm missing something. What am I missing? Keep on climbing. Keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. <laughs> <laughs>